NASA wants to use it to land American astronauts on the moon. The Pentagon wants to use it to whisk military cargo around the world in minutes. Astronomers, satellite companies, and aspiring space tourists are eyeing its potential to drastically slash the cost of getting to space. Elon Musk says it is the holy grail of space technology and sees it as crucial to his ultimate goal of colonizing Mars. It is called Starship, and for SpaceX, Musk's private space company, it's the future. Its success or failure may determine whether the company achieves his dreams. Interestingly enough, as SpaceX continues ground tests of its Starship Super Heavy rocket ship in preparation for its first orbital flight, scientists have finally revealed the great potential of Starship that could change the space industry forever. More on this in today's episode of Great SpaceX. SpaceX's workhorse rocket, the 70-meter-tall Falcon 9, has already shaken up the aerospace business. With that rocket, SpaceX pioneered reusability, employing retro rockets and steerable fins to guide the first stage to a landing after it re-enters the atmosphere. Today, SpaceX routinely slaps on a fresh coat of paint and launches it again. In June, the company flew one of these flight-tested stages a record 13th time. Another record is on the horizon. The company is on track to launch more than 50 Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets this year, or about one per week on average. The dependable reuse and rapid launch cadence are two of the reasons why SpaceX can charge $67 million for a Falcon 9 launch, much less than its competitors. But Musk doesn't want to stop there. This man wants to dream bigger dreams. As a result, Starship was born. The body of the rocket is stainless steel, heavier than the aluminum alloys of most rockets, but cheaper and more easily manufactured. The 33 Raptor 2 engines crammed into the back end of Super Heavy burn methane rather than the traditional kerosene-based rocket fuels. Not only because it's cheaper, but also because it could be harvested on Mars by combining CO2 and water. The booster is designed to return to the launch pad after its six-minute ride. The company believes it can be refueled and ready to relaunch in an hour. Starship is also reusable. The goal is to be able to launch each vehicle three times a day. Once in orbit, a loaded Starship could be gassed up by a tanker version of the vehicle, enabling it to take its 100 tons of payload onto the moon or Mars. At the February event, Musk explained how a single Starship launching three times per week would lift more than 15,000 tons to orbit in a year, about as much as all the cargo that has been lifted in the entire history of spaceflight. Musk has claimed the price of each launch might actually be as low as 1 million US dollars, or $10 per kilogram to low Earth orbit. The only rocket close to Starship in its capabilities is NASA's Space Launch System, or otherwise known as the SLS, set to fly for the first time this month. Earlier this year, the agency's auditor found each launch would cost about 4 billion US dollars or nearly $60,000 per kilogram. When SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk talks up Starship, it's mostly about human exploration. Set up bases on Mars and make humans a multi-planetary species. Save civilization from extinction. World-renowned physicist Dr. Michio Kaku shares his opinion. As an insurance policy, we have to make sure that, that humans become a two-planet species. And now, of course, Elon Musk has revived this vision by talking about a multi-planet species. Even Neil deGrasse Tyson, who calls himself one of SpaceX's biggest critics, also believes that Musk's SpaceX orbit project has more merit and has a higher chance of going beyond suborbital flight. The concept of SpaceX is, we want to send people to places it is an effort to push that limit, that frontier, of exploring space. SpaceX could fly bigger and heavier instruments more often, and much more cheaply if SpaceX's projections of $10 per kilogram cargo launch costs are to be believed. On Mars, they could deploy rovers not as one-offs but in herds. Space telescopes could grow, and fleets of satellites in low Earth orbit could become commonplace. Astronomy, planetary science, and Earth observation could all boldly go better than they ever have gone before. 
One mission being considered by Jennifer Heldman, a scientist at NASA Ames, is a sample return from the moon. A starship would land on the moon, fill its hold with lunar ice that would be kept chilled, and then return it to Earth for scientists to study. Researchers could discover much about how the ice was deposited over billions of years and where it is abundant and available for a future lunar base. Daniel Baker, director of the Laboratory for Atmospheric and Space Physics at the University of Colorado Boulder, suggests that Starship could carry a probe to Mercury, a tough planet to reach because of the need for extra fuel and shielding against the sun. Starship could also send a massive probe into interstellar space, perhaps passing by some of the outer planets along the way, like the Voyager probes did. The massive rocket could also launch space-based telescopes that would dwarf both the Hubble and the James Webb. The Starship could also launch a series of landers directed towards some of the most interesting moons of the outer planets. For example, NASA has been studying a Europa lander as a follow-up to the Europa Clipper. Europa, a moon of Jupiter, is thought to have a subsurface ocean covered by a layer of ice that might be warm enough to contain extraterrestrial life. Saturn's moons Titan and Enceladus are also possible targets for landers. Enceladus is an ice-covered world similar to Europa. Titan is a weird world with liquid methane seas. NASA is studying a mission that would put a submarine into one of those seas, the Kraken Mare. The humans versus robots argument has been raging among space policy experts since the beginning of the space age. As Scientific American notes, robots can explore the moons and planets far more cheaply than astronauts who need expensive life support systems to sustain them. However, astronauts are far more capable than robots in running experiments and doing field exploration using the advantage of human flexibility, experience, and judgment. SpaceX's Starship, however, may provide a solution to the humans versus robots problem by enabling both. Humans will return to the lunar surface on a human landing system, Starship. Musk dreams of using the Starship to build a colony on Mars. The Starship will also enable a number of planetary missions that have so far been too expensive and too big to fit into existing rockets. Everyone wins. SpaceX has already proven the virtues of reusable rockets with the Falcon 9 and Heavy, which have taken the lion's share of the launch market. The Starship will follow the principle that reusability plus quick turnaround leads to cheap access to space and therefore more space missions, but on a much larger scale. Thus, once Starship becomes operational, it will help to fulfill the promise of the space age that has been over a century in the making. Are you as hyped up as I am about the Starship? Because you should be. I love it. But not as much as I love you for staying here till the end. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. Bye!